for me, I was actually interested when I also was doing architecture. I was very interested in what happens as you brought up just now about the, the, the gap between the everyday and the person, the normal person, the street, my family, my my parents, my friends, and the stuff that we do. And because there was such a great disconnect between the two, I was always thinking of uh, are there ways and means to bridge this connection? Yeah. And I think so far, all my the things that I've been doing, uh, always trying to answer this question, but or maybe in different ways. Also, I, f I found that increasingly, the things that I was reading didn't come from the discipline. They came from other uh, disciplines like uh, cultural geography, anthropology, ethnography. Uh, I mean, these people were doing the stuff, or material culture, were doing the stuff that actually concerns us. It concerns things, it concerns people, the objects and the places that they are, and they talk about these things. Of course, they don't talk about it in the same terms that we do because they don't concentrate on the aesthetics and the form and so on. But they do talk about the relationship between things. And we seemed only to be very focused on the objects, which is the building as the object. We think that, for example, when we talk about site, for example, and we have site drawings and site model, and then we talk about site. But the way we, in which we talk about it is in architectural jargon. It is very exclusive. You need to be in the club to be able to understand it. Yeah. Um, and I realized that when we put these things in a situation that is not encompassed by the, not protected by the boundaries of architecture, like in a museum setting where anyone can walk in and look at a thing and have an opinion of it that is not defined by their knowledge of what the architect can or cannot do or what are the standards of good architecture. You get some actually quite shocking responses, you know. Uh, people will read these things and have totally different understanding of what you expect them to have. It's a public who is not educated to see these things in the way that we see it. And yet they have every right to see it in the ways they choose to see it. I'm personally very interested in gender. <laughs> I'm a very interested. I mean, I'm a, I would say that I'm a committed feminist. Yeah. Although this is really not the place to, you know, in Asia, we don't, I mean in Singapore there's no such thing as feminist. But I do think that things need to be talked about uh, and debated. Uh, and, and there is really a underrepresentation of different groups of people or different, you know, uh, categories of interests which are not talked about and which are always consumed or, subs or kind of put within the dominant. What happened to the... What happened to all the women architects? Because many of them after they finished school or they uh, start a family or whatever it is, decide that they don't want to practice. Uh, and I, I do think, I know, I know that it might be not very significant, but I do think that if the number of women who practice or who teach are significant enough to shift, perhaps this idea of relationships might be may become more prominent. I mean, over here, this it's about need. It's about need, and it's about uh, relevance based on need and practicality. Uh, and I think a lot of I, a lot of uh, things which are softer and more intangible than these things about function and need and performance don't get talked about. I do think there's a that there's probably a problematic in that, and I, I that's the reason also why I think the idea the, the spectrum of the interior is not taken up because it's seen as a very unarchitectural kind of soft is unfocused but there is a I think there's a point in a way to complicate this very strict boundaries because somehow a lot when a lot is left out uh, I think architecture then becomes very uh, mechanical 
that uh, you know it's in a way it becomes mechanical and dispensable you know it, you don't really need an architect in fact actually the contractor could do it just as well so it becomes also a question of boundaries you know so I have to protect my boundary because if I don't protect my boundary I lay myself open to all kinds of criticism this lack of complexity or complication that's caused by this entanglement with different you know different mm -hmm. kinds of fields and objects and people and relationships the architect just separates all that and says okay I just do that these other things okay they do matter but it's already covered in my stuff you know? and I won't think about it too much because you know I'm actually making the building the thing is that architecture should be messy I mean it should be messy in the way of its organization that there should be many parties doing architecture at the same time, you know, not just the designers, but the uh, people who write, people who are involved in policy, you know, and, and all these people should have conversations with each other. Because the problem now is that if the, the urban people are doing their own things, and the designers are doing their own things, and then, well, the academics want to talk to people and nobody wants to talk to them. And <laughs> Architecture could be a great discipline. It could be a great discipline, but I think that it's giving up too much to other people. It's giving away too many things that it could do and that it could be interested in. How this agency of the architect can be expanded without diluting